Welcome to Brainish English Stories. It took a few moments before the lady really understood that something was happening in the corner of the room. Even then, she still didn't know exactly what it was. To say it simply, she whispered, This is very strange. She leaned forward on her soft knees and watched what was happening. At first, it seemed like a soft wind that she couldn't explain. It didn't come from an open window or door. Some papers fell to the floor and the curtains moved gently. It would have been easy to think it was just a small breeze, but then something very strange started to happen. The air in the room suddenly rushed to one spot, and it felt like the air was shaking. In the middle of all this, she thought she could see something that looked a little like a shape. The quiet room was broken by the sound of a book flying open with its pages flipping fast. A vase with flowers fell over and the sweet water spilled on the floor. It felt like a soft wind was moving through the room, touching all the small things inside. The lady's hair was blown forward toward the corner of the room where she was looking. The strange feeling was growing stronger, and it felt like something big was about to happen. She stood up without thinking, even though her long dress was blowing around her ankles. She reached her hand into the air. Suddenly, she felt another hand grab hers, but it didn't feel very real. What she saw in front of her looked like something, but also like nothing at the same time. Then, slowly, a young man started to appear. He was wearing fancy clothes for the evening, with a long, flowing cloak like the kind that ghosts wear in stories. Wow, that was hard, he complained. I thought I would never appear. The lady quickly sat down in her chair, shocked. But even though she was surprised, she still made sure to fix her messy hair. The man looked at himself with a confused face. Then, sounding a little annoyed, he said, Excuse me, but are my feet on the floor or where are they? In a calm voice, she told him that his shiny shoes were just a little bit off the ground, about two or three inches above the rock. So, with some effort, he lowered himself until his feet were properly on the floor. When he walked around to look at the small things in the room, it seemed like he was walking too lightly, almost floating. After looking around, trying to act calm even though his heart was beating fast, he came back to the lady. Well, here we are again, my love, he said, and kissed her hands with ghostly kisses. It feels like forever since I've been trying to come back to you from the other world. Sometimes I almost lost hope. Let me tell you, life is not easy for someone like me. He took a deep breath and looked at her and the room as if he missed everything. Such a small room. And here you are. You know, he continued with energy, I thought about this place even in the grave. I couldn't sleep well because I hadn't come back here. Oh! There are so many things we don't finish when we are alive. He shared some lines he had written before. Now that everything is done and I lie so low, I cannot sleep because of my only care. For though I didn't know that dark place, I did not go where my heart wanted to be. And I didn't see you thinking of me. 
He sighed. These things bother ghosts so much. So, I came back as soon as I could to make sure you are still mine. He looked at her deeply. I see from the calendar on your table that many years have passed since my, um, since I died, he added, blushing a little. It seems that well-mannered ghosts don't talk much about their own death. Oh, how fast time goes. You'll be with me soon, my dear. She stood tall and proud, and he noticed her beauty. He saw the strength of life in her face, looking down at death, and realized that she had forgotten him. He stood up, his hands shaking in his pockets, then turned away to hide his sad face. But he was a brave ghost, so he quickly thought of what to do. She looked at him with surprise and anger, so he pulled out a card from his pocket. Then he took a pencil and wrote something under his name. Quiet to the heart, wherever it is. That gave me a moment of rest. Quiet to the heart, until it is dead. And the heart turns to dust, where I visited. Quiet to the heart, even if it forgets. The guest it once held. To the heart, good night. He gave her the card and bowed. Then, out of habit, he walked to the door, forgetting that as a ghost, he couldn't open it. When the door didn't open, he sighed, remembering that he was a ghost. He got ready to disappear, but he looked at the unfaithful lady one last time. She was still looking at the card in her hand, and tears were running down her face. She has remembered, he thought. How nice of her. For a moment, he thought he could leave quietly, like ghosts usually do. But his feelings were too strong. In an instant, he was holding her in his arms, pouring out his love, his sadness, the story of how much he missed her, how he had doubts and felt unhappy, and how he made the hard journey back to see her. Oh! He cried. Think about how much pain I felt when I found out that you had forgotten me. And yet I had guessed it in the dark. I knew it because I felt restless and hopeless. Maybe some lines I thought of will remind you. Do you remember how I used to write poetry? Where the grass cries over his dark grave and the glowworms crawl lies the tired head of one buried deep who cannot sleep, the forgotten dead. He sat next to her and talked about the love they once had for each other, how he had stayed loyal through everything, and about her beauty, her cruelty, and the light of her face that guided him through the darkness to find her. He talked about many things, and the lady bowed her head and cried. The night passed like this. The moon moved across the sky, and soon the first light of dawn touched the sky. But the ghost kept talking, and the lady held his ghostly hands close to her heart. Finally, the sky started to turn pink as the sun came up. I can't stay any longer, he said. It's time for all good ghosts to go to bed. But she fell on her knees in front of him, hugging his ghostly waist with a sad embrace. Oh, don't leave me, she cried, or my love for you will destroy me. He bent down eagerly. Say it again. Make me believe you. I love you, she cried over and over again, 
with so much pain and truth that even the most doubtful ghost would believe her. You will forget me again, he said. I will never forget, she cried. My whole life will be one long memory of you. I will live only to remember you, to honor you, to regret, and to wait for you. He lifted her face and saw that she was telling the truth. Well, he said, wrapping his cloak around him, now I can finally have some peace. He kissed her hair with a cheerful grace and got ready to disappear, lightly tapping his leg with the light-colored gloves he was holding. Goodbye, my dear, he said. Now I can sleep at night. My heart is finally at peace. But mine is breaking, she cried, trying once more to hold his fading form. He blew her a kiss with his ghostly fingers, and all that was left with her, besides her broken heart, was a small movement of the air.